I fuck dogs when I'm smelling shit. <laughs> she, she was like, what? I go, Pat, it's so much better than being racist. <laughs> start, 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 start the show. Start the show. Start the show. Welcome back. Oh, you motherfucker. <laughs> it's so good to be back. Uh, it's so I'm good to be back. I'm super jealous. I'm super jealous. Really, honestly, I'm most jealous that you got to do stand-up. I I'll haven't you, done it, it in a so, long time. You know, you know, it. you know what's crazy is what I'll tell you the the coolest thing that about being back on stage is all the fucked up thoughts that we've been having while in quarantine that you're afraid to tweet because you're afraid it's going to come out wrong. Yeah. You get to just take them on stage and you forgot, oh, this is the medium I work at. It yeah. is so much fun. Do you remember the Confederate statues joke I told you that we edited it out? Uh, forget it. Yeah, I, I hope we edited it out. The I got it to work on stage. And it's just, you just got to work it a couple times and try it. And, yeah. And, and your, your joke was something like, we should put them all back. They're the best guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. Something so. like that. <laughs> <laughs> but so, it was like it's it's you forgot the fun, the danger. Like nothing's yes. changed. So much has changed online with cancel culture yeah. and everyone attacking everyone that you go into the clubs or you go into this these drive in movie theaters and you are like, Oh, nothing's changed at all. <sighs> all everyone's still but, wants to okay. laugh. Okay. What was your, your first show? Was it Phoenix? Phoenix. Now you said shaky legs, right? Hardcore. Right. How what were you stumbling through stuff and forgetting stuff? Uh uh. So then I uh, I got dropped the joke and I like goes oh good article uh, you know for one of the end of yeah. the one of the jokes and then I'm like all right what's next as opposed yes. to you know the, I mean you know the feeling when you're every comic knows this and this is just for comics really yeah sometimes when you're like a third of the way through the joke you'll remember you'll be thinking about your next joke and you'll remember you'll be kind of throwing in tags for your next joke or working on your next joke as you're finishing this joke yeah. Or at least, or you'll be so in the moment that you'll be thinking of how do I get this joke different? How do I rewrite this joke? None of that was happening. My brain was scrambling. It looked like a secretary with her hair up in a bun and pencils in it with papers all everywhere yeah, going yeah. like, how do I, okay, hold on. Yeah, we yeah, got yeah. a big black, yeah. big black dick. How do we get out of this? That's the joke. The joke is good. <laughs> okay, okay. It's good. Okay, it's good. It's okay, good. Okay. It was, dude, it was so much fun. <laughs> that first show was scary. Second show, I went up, I had a beer. I never drink before I go on stage, mm -hmm. but I had a beer and uh and it was it was fucking fun and by the time i did my last club show was in salt lake city yeah oh bro you were on i went i did the i record i, I did the full i did i think an hour and 40 Jesus. and i i the first 30 minutes was just all improv just you know where you're, yeah. you're really in the moment yeah and you're writing and, you're and i and i I kept thinking, I'm not getting this again. I'm not getting it again ever. I, for yeah. a year, I won't go back to clubs probably. Right. But um, but those theaters, th those drive-in movie theaters are such a crazy experience. That is, man. That's so cool. Most I, people won't have that experience. You I know? told you, man, I, I really want you to do it because I want to do some with you because I think you would it would it you would be overwhelmed by it. It, right. it feels like this is obviously everyone knows i speak in hyperbole but it feels like you're it feels better than just doing a theater when you do a theater you walk on stage you see the people sometimes like chicago theater you'll be like wow this is crazy you know and yeah. then some theaters you're like oh nice you know some theaters are ugly as fuck and you're just like oh i feel like i'm doing a ted talk yeah some theaters are overwhelming where you're like like the beacon you're like oh shit this is the beacon in new york yeah sounds crazy you go to a drive-in movie theater in tulsa and you're in tulsa not to shit on Tulsa, but it is Tulsa. And you're like, holy fuck, man. This is amazing. You see everyone. It's 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 a different way wait, to see so your wait, audience. Are the headlights all on on the cars? No. no. So, so everything's off? Everything I've heard, uh, other comedians trash uh, drive-in movie theaters. And yeah. I've heard it a lot now recently. Yeah. Starting with Chappelle, who I don't think, he wasn't trashing it, but he was just like, he was like, that shit's not for me. They honk throughout your jokes and. You, they flick your lights. That's not, that doesn't happen. I mean, maybe that would happen for bad comedians. Yeah. Dead silent, listening. Where are they sitting in, in uh, on, on everyone's? The hoods? Oh, 
They set up couches. They set up inflatable oh, mattresses. Wow. They fill up their trunk beds with their truck beds with with recliners. And I mean, it really is a full production. They're tailgating. Let me I'll t- let me just pitch it to you this way. Doors open around seven, six thirty, seven. Show doesn't start till nine, right? Yeah. So everyone pulls in and gets set up. They start grilling. They set up their cocktails. They got you know they're doing shots. They're, it's just fucking out of this world. They're setting up huge like. They're throwing football. They're doing fucking uh, cornhole toss. It's tailgating. It's legit tailgating. And it's the... because oh, you're, you're like glowing. I'm talking it, about this. It's one of the coolest experiences I've ever had because it, it you go from being in quarantine to releasing a special, being in quarantine, yeah. and going, did anyone watch it? What's yeah, happening yeah, with my yeah. career? I'm lost. Am I ever going to do stand-up again? What's going to happen with our country? To going to this where people are showing up and they're like... And like I would... They're surrounded the bus and like if you stick your head out, everyone's taking pictures and... And then it was like so much fun. Everyone's tailgating. Everyone's having a blast. And then the sun sets. And, and every night we've got a gorgeous sunset. So all of a sudden you got 2,000 people in the lot watching a beautiful sunset together having drinks. Sun goes down. Show starts. Everyone starts cheering like going crazy. They're perfectly great uh, audience members. Like meaning big laughs. And, you, and they're laughing. You're in a quarry. And they're laughing on top of you. Yeah. You definitely feel the pops. If you're a good comic. If you're a bad comic, it's going to be a rough <laughs> fight. Fucking night. I'm not going to lie to you. But if you're a good comic, like if you if you can hold your weight as a comic, yeah. you would love this. Yeah. Because a good pop of a joke, a good snap, a good punchline, and you feel thunders of it. And then, uh, and then the I mean, my favorite, without a doubt, is you say, thank you, good night. And everyone hops in their cars. And they flick their headlights and hit their horns. Dude in Indianapolis set up a fireworks show in the fucking back. Really? Fireworks start going off. And I'm like, oh, I'm getting chill bumps telling well, you about it. And first of all, it's goosebumps. But secondly, <laughs> it's uh it's it's so like what you're describing is how if you had never done this, how I would describe uh the perfect setting for you. If someone was like, What is Bert yes. Love? I'd be like, Are people grilling? Are they drinking? Yes. Is there a fucking yes. football being tossed? Are they out? Guys are filling up their truck beds <laughs> with is, water. Yeah, and they're like, Bert, you need a bath. You uh, smell like shit. <laughs> Did anybody call you out for smelling bad or fucking dogs? Oh yeah. So that so so <laughs> so we do so there's no heckling. There's no like no heckling. But yeah. you, you can't even even if there was like people say stuff like we love you or whatever, but that's fine. But so the show, they flick their headlights. Yeah. We had a guest set usually come in. John Reap came in. Miss Pat came Ms. in. Miss Pat, yep. Miss Pat was like, this is some white boy shit. Yeah, she must have She was that. like, this is fucking bizarre. So then you get done, and like me and Miss Pat get in the golf cart. I stand on the back. She sits in it. And as everyone exits, you just do your meet and greet. And so everyone's in their car leaving. Right. So you're keeping your distance because it's quarantine keeping your stuff. Distance, and, yeah. and you're staying within like five feet from the car. It's probably 10 feet, really. And just driving around going, hey, thank you for coming out. And people are like, oh, this is, you know, a lot of people are just saying thank you. It's just because yeah. it's, I think a lot of people are grateful that you're giving them an opportunity for entertainment and safe. Right. I, I keep saying, you know, your people are going to live however they want to live. You go to clubs. Some clubs were very socially distanced. Some clubs did it right. Some clubs did not. And and that's just the truth. I don't want to candy coat yeah. anything. I want to keep everything uh, 100% honest. Some clubs were not, so it, and it was difficult for some clubs because they'd seat people, and then people would sit whatever the fuck they wanted to sit. Sure. So you'd seat them in the back to see them social distance, and I'm like, let's move forward. And then you'd look, and you'd be like, why is everyone, and you can't help it. You really can't help it. I'm, I'm, I don't know what to say pro or con for that, but I know on stage they would tape off an area so that you were five feet from where the tape was, from where the audience was yeah. and I always stayed up against the wall. I just am very obsessive compulsive about that. And halfway through the tour, I was laying in bed one morning and my air conditioner was blowing on my nose. My nose was clogged up. I was like, Oh shit, I got coronavirus. And I was like, and then, and I, because my nose is all clogged up and I go, I'm, I had a real moment. I said, is this worth it? Like, is it worth it? Like that I'm getting, I, that I just got coronavirus. Like, and I'm in the middle of the country and now I'm going to infect my whole, bu- like, and then I got up, blew my nose. I'm like, I'm fine. You need to shut the fuck up. Like, you're, I, we were 100% safe. As, as safe as you could be. Had a mask on everywhere. And he walk in, back door of the club, into the green room, no contact. Server would come to the door, take our order. Server would leave the door. Never, never come in and hang out with us, never talk to us. We were by ourselves. You do your show, come in, 
and then exit through the back. Every time, go right to the bus. Every time it was from the bus to the club, from the club to the bus. And then second we got in the bus, Ron would be there. We'd take off to the next city. It was not a lot of like So wait a fun. minute though. Go back to your, your meet and greet on the golf cart. You're driving by. Oh, it's fucking amazing. So we're in the golf cart. The first time we did it, I guess, was maybe Indianapolis. We didn't do it in North Carolina. Maybe it was Indianapolis. And yeah, and it was, we just did it on a spur. I had to get from from the stage back to the tour bus yeah. and we started driving and people were losing their fucking minds and they were like they were like oh what are you doing and then you're like oh fuck yeah everyone knows me for a meet and greet i love meet and greets i love saying thank you so we just did it we just went through the traffic and it was you smell like shit you fuck dogs and poor pat's like what the fuck <laughs> hey he's ah. not pat he's not racist and she goes i know motherfucker you know, he fucks dogs, though. And she's like, he don't fuck dogs. I'm like, Pat, let him say I fuck dogs. She's like, you don't fuck dogs? You don't... <laughs> Pat, poor Pat was like, got out of there. He goes, what the fuck are they talking about? And I was like, I fuck dogs and I'm smelling shit. <laughs> she, she was like, what? I go, Pat, it's so much better than being racist. <laughs> okay. He's not racist at all, Pat. She's like, bitch, I know. Um... No, it so was so awesome. I, could I really I could tell want you to do something because I, know. because I think that... Well, we started talking about it. It's yeah, possible. I, so. I, it would be... And there are so many cool ones. And, and it's not about like... It's not about a big payday. It's about getting out... I want to do stand-up. I was supposed to do stand-up this weekend. I know. In San Diego. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, well, they were, everybody... I heard. Which, were you at a, the comedy club? I was just going to do the club, half capacity. It was all, you know, ready to go. And then they were like... Hey, you know, there's a spike in this. And I was like, look, I don't want to. It's not, it's definitely, I'll tell you right now. Um, is it worth it? Now, here's what I'll say. Because I've heard, I've heard a lot of, I've heard a lot of uh, kind of uh, going back and forth online between certain comics and certain comics, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Certain comics are, are um, finger pointing to other comics that they're the problem. And then other comics, and, and by the way, really good comics and really good people. No, I mean, I'm not just talking about the obvious ones, but like yeah. a lot of comics are doing spots. A lot of comics are doing clubs. I will tell you that the, you go into the clubs and they are like tearfully grateful that you're there because they're all losing their clubs. Yeah. And they're all losing their clubs. Um, they're, it, it the, the staff was like in tears. Every show you did, the staff was like, you have no idea, you just saved my life. The, the staff that I had, I mean, this is a little sappy, but like the staff I had, so for the drive-ins are a little complicated. I have to travel with a, a production crew as well that I'm, I pay for. So I travel with the production crew to set up the stage, film the show so they can go on the drive-ins. So these are all like production people. Every single one of them took a solid fucking minute out of their day at one point throughout this thing, socially distanced because they're all in masks and gloves the whole time. Yeah. And they were like, Hey, I just want to thank you. Like, I, I'm not losing my house now. Like, it, like people need to work, and that is what half of America is saying: is yeah, like, yeah. you can't stop me from working. Of course. And then, and then some people in Hollywood are like, "No, you're spreading the virus." Some people everywhere, all over the country. So there is, it is a weird juxtaposition of going like, I definitely don't want to bring people together to uh, get people sick yeah. at all. That is not my, and 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 when you went into clubs where it was oversold. I was definitely frustrated and a little upset going, I had a deal with you. And then you look at some clubs and they're just like, hey man, I, we're fucking losing our ass. We're just trying to keep our head above water. Yeah, It's a weird, and, yeah. and, you, and you're not gonna stop an American. An American's gonna do what the fuck they wanna do. And a lot of people do not respect this virus. That is the truth. That's the truth. And I, I, I'm really like sympathetic to people who, um, you know, we all need to work. Like we all need to work. So uh, I mean, there are comics losing their houses right now. There are comics losing their apartments. There are comics with overheads that uh, that they can't afford. And not I'm not saying like frillous overheads. There are comics that are supporting their mom or supporting a loved one yeah. because they ma were making money at a certain time and they're losing what they have. And I think they should work too. I'm telling you, I just wish I could figure out a way to make this make this drive a movie theater more um cost effective yeah because i i could i could set up a fucking tour Nationwide for everyone tour, and yeah. just go let's let's bring you everyone on the road let's make everyone money let's get everyone back on the floor i wish i wish that I, and and listen the clubs are fucking clubs are so much more fun than the drive-ins yeah the, i mean the, like meaning stand-up wise to be that intimate with like i'll tell you des moines uh, Leisha leisha did it perfect she pulled out all the fucking tables and then placed them 
socially distant. It was like probably the best one I'd done. Birmingham, everyone was great. I'm not shitting on anyone, but I'll just tell you the ones that stood out. Did you do Huntsville? Stardom. Or, oh, you did Stardom. Stardom. I walked in. I was like, Alabama. If anyone was going to be sitting on each other's shoulders, I thought it'd be you fucking animals. Yeah. And they were like, nah, bro. No. <laughs> no. Nah. They were wearing masks. In Dude, the showroom. taking people's temperatures. Like, yeah. that was the, the good one. Like, we did Oklahoma City. They took everyone's temperature going in. And you're like, oh, that makes me feel comfortable. Yeah. You know, like, so there are ways to do it. If you follow the rules, and I got to be honest with you, if you're a comic, and this is the end of this, we won't need to talk. If you're a comic, you need to dictate to the club how you want it to be handled. And this is, these, this is what you want. You want that first row of seats pulled out entirely and pushed back so it's the second row of seats. You want them, if they can, to remove tables. And more importantly, other, you want that path to the stage to be widened because you cannot stop just lunatics from just jumping out of their seat. And I was in San Antonio, laugh out loud, and I get to the stage fine. And I'm first show, I'm coming off. And the guy comes up and gives me a big hug and just right in my face. I fucking love you, bro. <laughs> I'm like, right in bro, your mouth. You just fucking Corona raped me. Like, yeah. how dare you? Like, and I got back and I'm like, you know, I've been fucking, I was so angry because I was like, I've been fucking perfect. I've been perfect with no contact. And then this guy yeah. just spits in my face. And here's the thing. It's like. You know he does that to everybody. Of course. Like, you know he's been doing that to a lot oh, of people. Yeah. You're not the so then immediately guy. I fucking, that's the next morning I woke up with my nose and I was like, I got fucking coronavirus. Yeah. Got, and then Shane's like, you don't get it the next day, Bert. And I was like, oh, really? And he was like, it takes a couple of days. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Fuck it. <laughs> but yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. Well, look, I, this, I want to jump ahead to something else that's really fascinating, I think. Um, you told me on a phone call that's in my driving uh, vlog, uh, the one that I put up, it's a story it's the one that has the model y tesla uh so i was on the phone with you because i was asking you about when they used to say that you used to shit on the beds and vomit all over the walls at the yeah. comedy condos and you're like that wasn't me but i don't know how the, we talked about it yeah and then out of nowhere you dropped that you've been wiping your ass barehanded with your finger yeah not all the time but it's been happening but how I mean, did that start? Well, it started with the fact that I've been washing my hands a lot lately. You have been. Yeah. And so like, because of on that tour, I wash my hands nonstop, sanitize nonstop. I'm okay, like, my I'm, hands have never been so clean. I'm with you there. Normally I'm not a hand washer at all. Like I've never really been a hand washer at all. Yeah. Ever since coronavirus, I'm washing my hands a lot. Okay. So I'm a little more cool doing dirty shit with my hands. So I go, oh, cause you're cleaning clean. so much. Yeah. Right. So I'm sitting in, I'm in New Orleans. On a toilet. On a toilet at a at an RV park, okay. And, and you take a shit, and I take a shit, and uh, I'm with I look, you so far. I look for toilet paper, and there's no toilet paper. Okay. I'm in my running shorts, and a visor. That's it. And I'm like, okay. I was like, all right. Well, I'm not. I just put on these clean running shorts. I plan on going going to jog. I go. I'm not. I don't have anything. And there's a sink real close. I, might, I actually had my arm on the sink as I was shitting. Yeah. And I went. And I'd heard, I'd heard once in, in, by the way, I don't, I don't want to sound, uh, ignorant, yeah. but I'm going to say in certain types of countries, uh -huh. they own, they bow or head fist or they do something cause they wipe their ass with their right hand. Okay. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. I've heard this. What is it like? Well, I've, I've, I don't, and I, I've also heard this, so I, I can't, I've, yeah, I have, yeah. yeah. I've it's heard that, 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 um, that in certain middle Eastern countries, you ne you never extend your right hand to shake because that's your wiping hand. You're right, right. So that they would shake left handed. That's that's the extent of what I, what I've heard about that. Right now, I'm so progressive that I'm starting to I'm starting to look at different cultures and stop going, well, that's fucking disgusting. Yeah. And go, hmm, is there something to learn from this culture? Okay. Right? Okay. So, I'm sitting there and I'm going, well, they wipe their ass in the Middle East with their fucking hand, fingers. Uh -huh. I go, it's got to be. Effective. I think it's got to be pretty effective. Yeah. So I just turn on the sink and I grab the thing and I go down and it's not that dirty. And I just give a little scrub like I'm like like I'm like I'm trying to get into a girl's asshole. Yeah. Do you remember that move where you're yeah. like, I'm just playing. Yeah, I'm yeah, just playing. Yeah. I'm you're just toying playing. with the outside a little yeah. bit. Yeah. I'm just I'm just surveying the property. Right. I haven't explored yet. Right. Do you like it? Do you it? like yeah, it? Yeah. And, <laughs> and the this is Lewis and then Clark comes over and he's mm -hmm. like, Wait, 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 or what are we doing? Are we gonna uh -huh. we're Sacagawea? <laughs> so but you do feel a little bit of 
you feel a little mud, right? A little bit. I so I didn't this time. I didn't at all. Okay. I was like, I was like, I was like, okay. So I kind of wipe, and then I look at my finger, and there's nothing on Wait, it. Wait, do you wipe between your legs? Uh, it hasn't even gotten bad yet. Oh yeah, I wipe from the front. You don't go behind and wipe up? Uh, no, because I'm fucking not a gorilla. I fucking go from the front. That's all. I'm an adult. I go from the front. So. So I go from the front, I, I wipe a little bit. And by the way, I know I'm about to get fucking lit up from wiping from the front. I don't know why I wipe from the front. I'll tell you this, let's, let's, not, let's not lose track of this. I was blown away, and I mean completely blown away, at the amount of people that were like, yeah, I brush after, after breakfast. Yeah. And they, they don't wake up and brush their teeth. Blown away. <laughs> I, I literally thought it would be like everybody and then you. Did you see what Georgia said? No. All my stories? She goes, I, I'm doing a story and I go, I go, hey guys, I just woke up and I'm about to have my coffee and then I'm going to eat and I'm going to brush my teeth. And Georgia goes, oh, gross. You don't brush your teeth when you get out of bed? And I go, no. And I go, have you brushed your teeth? And she goes, no. I said, what are you doing? She goes, I'm going to eat something. And then I go, and then what? She goes, and then have like something to drink and then I'll brush my teeth. I go, that's what I just fucking said. There's, but I think it was fucking my favorite one. By the way, I am not calling her out at all. At all. Who? I'm not, I want to read it to you because I want to make sure I'm very clear with this. Okay. This is my favorite one. And I love this person. I love this person. I've been following her hardcore all through quarantine. You ready? Mm -hmm. Angela Johnson. <laughs> Did yes. you read hers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What'd she say? Wake up. Wonder why my body feels so old. Waddle, mope, stretch my way to the bathroom. Pee, wash my hands. I was like, wash your hands? Who washes their hands? Like, who washes their hands in the morning? I was like, what? Well, she peed. Oh, yeah, maybe that's it. <laughs> and then she went. <laughs> it wasn't a ritual like, oh, the day is new. It was I touched my vagina. I might have fucked that up. I, I missed reading pee. I missed reading pee. I just yeah. thought she walked up. She's like, oh, that murder was fucking rough last night. Let's make sure I'm totally clean. Oh, my God. All right, um, so you reach between your legs to wipe. And then, and then I, I kind of wipe and I look at my finger and there's nothing, right? Nothing? There's nothing. So then guess what I did next? I hope you washed that hand. No, not immediately. What'd you do? Sniff, sniff it. You smelled it. I smelled it. I smelled it. How did it smell? It smelled like an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty I was, bad. I was, not, I was surprised, but I shouldn't have been. I thought, oh, there's nothing on there. It's going to smell like that. I was like, ah, oh, no, it's shit, all right. I think I might throw up now. I think I might fucking throw up. So I go over. Oh, I feel like I can smell it. And I, 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 I. <laughs> so oh. turn this thing on and then realize I have to wash my hand by itself. Yeah. So I go. All is right, there well, soap or just water? There's soap. There's soap. Okay. So I'm, I'm, but it's, I'm. By the way, now I'm hurting my back reaching for the soap. Okay. So I, I I don't even I don't even really soap up. I just go back in, scrub again, then grab water, splash water scrub. It's almost like a help of a bidet. Like if a bidet had a finger, okay. a fin if a bidet had like a finger attachment, it would really fucking help out. So I clean. I then drip dry. Sit there for a second. I. Wrap up, go in, wash both hands aggressively. Mm -hmm. And then I just kind of sit there with it, like walk around. I'm like, I feel good. Yeah. And I was like, that actually might be one of the best wipes I've ever had. Because what you're finding a lot in these truck st stops and, and, and RV parks is one ply toilet paper. Right. It's, it's shitty toilet it's paper. Really, and it's really, and it leaves your asshole raw. And then I'm going. I want to leap ahead though. Okay. Did you do the tactic again with a messier brown? So it worked so well the first time I thought, I thought. Yeah. I think I might have just found a cheat code. Yeah. Like, remember when I told you I spit in my toilet paper to wipe my ass? Yes. That is like fucking, what is that? What are, an Alabama wet wipe? Yeah, I've done that. Those I've done are, that a bunch. Those are the best. I remember telling someone about that and he was like, what the fuck? No, that, that's definitely, especially like. Yeah. And if you haven't done it, you're fucked. If you're, you're in fucked. public, if you're like in an airport bathroom, it's a lifesaver. Yeah, have yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah. So, um, so then I, I shit again and I'm like. I Where are you this time? I think I'm at a comedy club. Okay. And there is toilet paper. But I go, oh, I got a, a new tactic. I got a new tactic. Yeah. So I go, and the second I go down, I feel what could only be called <laughs> the top of a frappuccino, like the the whipping of a frappuccino <laughs> down there. And I'm like, uh, this, is, this, is, 
Ah. This is more than I planned on. Fuck. I was like, but I'm already in it. And I'm like, yeah. I can't just go abort, abort. Yeah. Because now I got, and then I'm like. So are you doing like three pulls? No, or? no. I just got one finger, middle finger. And I go in and I go. And my first thought is, Tom, is where do I put this? <laughs> like, I'm, I can't put it in the fucking sink. Oh, you can't no. take a fucking finger full of shit into the sink. And no. then I'm like. I gotta flick it. I'm like, how am I gonna flick it? I'm like, oh my god, I'm I'm in trouble. I'm in real trouble right now. So I'm like, uh, God, this is not work. I don't know how they do this in the Middle East. I wish I could just call a friend and be like, Ahmed, Ahmed, how do you fucking wipe your ass when there's too much shit? So, so I just kind of go, all right. So I hammer it and then I rinse it and I'm like, I'm back to toilet paper. I'm back to toilet paper. And this is after I talk to you. I think what it is, I think it's a good tactic. Here's what I think is a good tactic. Are you going to do it more? I, I, here's where I will apply this. Okay. So, ye, like, for two days, I think it was, I think it's hemorrhoids, but I'm not sure. But, like, my asshole's been extremely itchy. So, sometimes with the cheap toilet papers, um, you will get, like, little dingleberry toilet papers mm -hmm. in your hair. And so, where that tactic works good is you've wiped, you're clean, and now you get some water and go down and just scrub the area yeah and then wash your hands right. i'm not done with it okay. but i haven't protected it. i haven't perfected it uh i'm so glad you're not done with it because i'd not, love to hear where it goes I, uh, by the way hey and by the way this is totally acceptable i would argue joe coy joe coy was raised to do this let's call him and find out he was raised to I, do that I, I don't do all my research i half listen to a story and then apply what i find yeah yeah, yeah let's see what joe but coy I'm says pretty certain that joe coy has a bowl of water next to his... Yeah, yes, I know about this. And he wipes his ass with his finger and uses the bowl of water. And by the way, if he does, then you can erase all your comments that you just put that I'm a fucking lunatic and go, actually, you know what? Bert is progressive. I'm so fucking progressive. I've been progressive my whole life. I've always been on the right side of history. I'll prove it. By the way, I tried calling Joe Coy because I was getting my blood taken. Mm -hmm. And the first thing a nurse says, you're a comedian? Do you know Joe Coy? Yeah. I was like, let me call him. I'll FaceTime him. And he didn't answer. Yeah. Uh, uh, he's, having, he's having a fucking blast. With what? He's in, I think he's in, I don't know. I shouldn't say anything. He never answers my phone calls. What do you think that means? Maybe he changed his number. Is he on, is he, uh, on the road? No, no. He's in... He, dude, he should do fucking drive-ins. Oh, yeah. I'm We'd telling you, there's so many guys that would love it. There's so many guys that would really enjoy it. I'm, I'm, I would be excited to take you out there, and then I want to get you a Pope mobile. Yeah. So you can do a meet and greet. <laughs> That'd be fun. That would be fun as well. Let fun. me, uh, uh, let me tell you. So we have to just address that it basically, I don't know, went viral the Kool-Aid thing. It was such a... Yeah, who uh, fucking saw that coming? Oh my God. I, I I didn't expect the moment to happen. It was obviously like a very organic thing. And yeah. then everybody... I mean, I have been... I was texted and called by so many people. Like, not just comedians and, the, and people that I've met. People relate... Like, my dad's friend, who, <laughs> you know, like some retiree <laughs> in fucking North Florida was like... Hit, like my dad was like, I gave him your number. He, he watched the Kool Aid thing. I'm like, what? <laughs> so like, like everybody started like hitting me up about it, and it just made a lot of people. It made it made me laugh to rewatch it. Oh, know? I uh, I I watched it. I watched it the day it came out because I remember laughing that hard when we did it, and I watched it the day it came out, and I couldn't. And just you laughing made me laugh, and I'm laughing with it. Yeah. And then throughout the tour, I would see people on the bus watching it and just laughing with it yeah and i go what do you and they go i don't even know what he's saying that's i know i i, I saw i got picked up by so many places like you know blogs and i saw barstool barstool yeah, retweeted uh, it. everybody like you know talking about these just two people laughing hysterically and then i got hit up so much about it that you know i have something to show you right so we'll do it one by one. Oh, I forget you do this. One, one, one by one. Okay, so what's first, a one by one? Oh, just because there's like more than one item. So. Okay, one. Okay, all right. So, and by the way, I'm a little shocked that Kool Aid has not reached out. I am too. They you know have not I, gotten you, this can much I tell heat. You, can I tell you why I think they haven't reached out? Because I'm mocking the fact that you drink it. <laughs> like, I'm like, you're gonna die. <laughs> and they're like, wait a minute, we don't want to fucking. Do, do you know in this whole process that randomly I got milk duds trending? No. So I put out 
So like we're on the tour. So you know the you know Spokane and, and Tacoma. Yeah. Those clubs and they have all the candy in the in the yeah. thing. Yeah. And I, I saw you do like which is your favorite candy? Yeah. What's your favorite? And, yeah. What's your top five? What would you pick? And then what's the one you would never take? Right. And so I put my five, top five very respectable list, starting with Heath Snickers. You know, very good list. Uh, Reese's peanut butter cups was number one, I think. And then I said, "What's your never?" And I put milk duds. And I was like, "They're just first of all, they pull out brackets. It's just a yeah. nightmare. They're a nightmare." And then all of a sudden everyone started trashing milk duds right and they got tripped and it started trending and then milk duds hershey's got fucking was like what the fuck so they started tweeting at me like you're talking shit about milk but it's you know it's one by the way shout out to the one guy who puss kind of pussied out of this fight but you know one guy runs their social media and he's like i see an opportunity let's light them up and uh and he was like coming at me from the Hershey's account from the, the Kit Kat account from Skittles from oh, Jolly really? Ranchers. He, he yeah, he's like sh- everyone's attacking me. And then I wrote back, "Hey, uh, real cool, uh, Milk Duds. You had to get your big brother Hershey's and Reese's Peanut and Kit Kat to come after me and your little sister Jolly Rancher." And then he just kind of stops. He's Stop like, "This it. isn't worth it." You know, someone in, in exactly like, "Stop it! We're having enough problems with Milk Duds. They <laughs> fucking suck. All right, God damn it! Get rid of Milk Duds." And then the one guy that's making Milk Duds just little chocolate drops. Milk Duds, by the way. That night we had a fucking pack of milk duds. They're not is, that bad. Are are Kit Kats on your yes list? Um, they yeah I yeah I love Kit Kats. I love Kit Kats. What was your top five? My top five is always Reese's peanut butter cups. Reese's peanut yeah, butter Reese's, cups. Now yeah. Reese's pieces are actually my favorite though. Re, uh, Reese's pieces are the shit. Way better. The shit. I love way that. better than M and M's. Yes. Peanut covered M and M's are probably the best. I I would still for me I'd still vote Reese's pieces. Do you remember when that was you know that's just fucking E T. That's yeah. ET. Yeah. It's the first time I ever had them was an ET. Reese's Pieces, Reese's Pieces came out Kit ET. Kat. Snickers are the shit. Dude, S- Snickers take shit to the next level. Yeah. It really does. It like it's such a great candy bar where if you're like If all this shit was around by the way, like around my house, easily you'd wheel me in here. I'd be like, "Hey." Like I would I just never stop eating it. Like I can't have that around. I am obsessed. Now I want to do sweet candies. Yeah, because like Skittles, someone was arguing Wait. Skittles might be the best sweet candy ever. Have you ever watched The Office? It's such a great show. If you have, you probably know that it's based on a UK series called The Office. Did you know that Ricky Gervais created it? But what if I told you there are nine other countries that have versions of The Office that you've never even seen? You probably didn't know about them because you're usually not in those countries, and those are only available in those countries, but you can access content around the world with no geo restrictions when you use ExpressVPN. See, ExpressVPN lets you control what site, where you want the site to think you're located. So you can choose from nearly 100 different countries, giving you access to the content that is, is not available in your region. If you like watching shows or movies, ExpressVPN is a must have. For less than $7 a month, ExpressVPN lets you access thousands of new shows and movies on Netflix, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, and tons of other streaming sites. It's a no-brainer, and it couldn't be easier to use ExpressVPN. Just fire up ExpressVPN app on your computer or TV, select a a location, and hit connect. ExpressVPN is also incredibly fast, and it does not slow down my connection. I can stream content in HD with no issues. Japanime, Isla Grace, Chrysler Loves Anime. We watch Japan, Netflix all the time. So get most out of your streaming service today. Go to expressvpn.com slash cave. If you use that link, you're going to get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. Again, that's expressvpn.com slash cave. Expressvpn.com slash cave to learn more. This episode of Two Bears is brought to you by Manscaped. Uh, Are you prepared to unveil your summer bod? Manscaped is here to ensure your (laughs) post-quarantine body is ready for the wild. Don't be the guy at the beach with the bear rug on your chest. If you grew some quarantine mantis, last least you could do is make sure they're hairless. This is a perfect time <laughs> to bring up uh, a very well-known video from the two of us called Bert Shaves Tom. It's on YouTube and it will show you how you can do it wrong. And by wrong, I mean having a friend like Bert who lies to you. Um, it, it was the most horrifying experience that made him laugh. But that's how you do it wrong. If you go to Manscaped, you can do it the right way. They have forever changed the grooming game with the perfect package 3.0. You can shave your dick, your balls, your tits, your a-hole, wherever you want. This is the best trimmer on the market. And here's a big thing we got to tell you. They also just launched 
launched in Canada. So if you're Canadian, you've gone years without using the right tools for the job. You can be one of the first Canadians to experience this life-changing products. Get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com slash bears. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com slash bears. Trim your chesticles with the besticles. Let me tell, let me see if you like this or not. This is the one that I had designed for. Your... Go ahead and pull it up. Can you make it big? Packed that... with vitamin C, red flavor, low, low calorie. calorie. Kool Aid. I love that shirt. You love it? I love that shirt packed with vitamin C. Because that, that's that's the big argument point for you is that it's <laughs> tons of vitamin C in it. <laughs> so that one is red in the flavor, low calorie. <laughs> <laughs> Who did that? Cam, my buddy Cam uh, at uh, Canvas Design. Oh, that's fucking that. hilarious. And then we did a, we accompanied it with a second shirt because, so that's me. That's so much sugar. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great fucking, as he was really Wonka. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. That is so fucking great. <laughs> that's so much sugar. So, oh, that's awesome. So they're both in the store if you want everybody with. Oh, those are up. fucking great. Oh, yeah, they're both in the store. Uh, if you want, uh, a lot of people were like, where is the Kool-Aid merch? We obviously can't write Kool-Aid on it. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, that's what it is. Oh, fuck yeah. That would be as are... crazy as me selling something that said, like, Mickey Mantle, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that was, like, episode one or two of this. The two things, the two things, <laughs> someone pointed out that I missed you saying this last episode when I go, you wear Jordans with shorts? And you're like, yeah. Yeah. And I go, who the fuck wears Jordans with shorts? And, and you're like, like, I'm pretty sure Michael Jordan did it every day. <laughs> Yeah, and then, all the people that you know buy them for what they're for, and then and then, I, and then I go, and then the day I came in with the Mickey Mantle jean shirt, and you're like, and you're like, this is for new sale. merch, and you go, what I go, you, I go, do you have a licensing agreement? And you're like, for what? <laughs> and you go, you can't just use someone's likeness and put on a shirt. And I go, I'm pretty sure you can. And you go, I can't make sure it's the same. Aaron Jordan. And I went, oh, that does make sense. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, I fucking missed this podcast. Yeah, man. Can't believe it's ending. So, <laughs> uh, I know. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was, uh, that, that was the hardest time. Do we have, oh, yeah. Will you, so tell us what happened here exactly, Nadav? Yeah. So, uh, what happened is that on Amazon, you know, people started looking up all this Kool Aid stuff. And so, uh, people started writing, uh, some reviews of Kool Aid. Uh huh. Yeah, because basically, like you can look that up if you want. If you want Kool Aid, you can just go to Amazon and just be like, "Hey, you know." And then what are the reviews? So then, some of the reviews now are like, uh, for just this is just if you pull up Kool Aid on Amazon, it makes you feel like uh. a machine. There's nothing like crushing two hundred and twenty-eight ounce growlers of sugar-free Kool Aid <laughs> by day's end. I enjoy sipping it while watching out-of-control men eat ice cream cones, just laughing to myself. I mean, they look so silly licking their ice cream as I look on with my red Kool-Aid mustache. <laughs> it's, it's easy to work into your day. Double iced coffee, walking on the treadmill with red wine, pool bath, then mix up your gallon of Kool-Aid for the day. You've earned it. You're an athlete. Just watch out for those stealthy <coughs> mega athletes posing as bus drivers. Oh. Those guys will give you nightmares of thinking if you of thinking you can you can dance. Oh my god. Oh my god, that is fucking hilarious. Oh, that is hilarious. Hey DA Watts, you just killed it, man. You made me yeah. laugh hard as shit. That's so funny. Fuck. Yeah. You fucking lost a foot race to Ron your driver. First I off, never hold thought on. Hold the on. best part of that video, the best part of that video is like when he's, he proposes the idea of doing it and you and then the video cuts to you. You're like, I'm going to kill him. It's like, there's way, no contest. By the way, he does no exercise. He never, I can tell. It, it, yeah, <laughs> I know. He, and he um, was super confident. We, it came from out of nowhere. Like, I, I, I was we, watching. We were, I was like, I'm, I think he saw. He kind of reminded me of you. 
I know. I know, right? Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. I think that's why we get along so well. Sure. Is because we both have this like real shit. Do you guys talk. bicker? Do you guys fight sometimes? Oh, yeah. Stuff? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, I said I in the video, like I, go, very... I go, you'd never guess he's my employee. Like, <laughs> I know. He doesn't talk to me like I pay him at all. I know. He talks to me like he pays me. Yeah. Um, he, it, what happened was we got a, we had a crawfish boil. So I, I get up. Right now, Ron's losing his fucking Dude, shit. So, and by Punching the way, his brother in the arm going, shout out to this Ron. Bullshit. Shout out to Ron because I also saw the Instagram story when he was like, he could, Tom can dance better than you. And, and you were like, no. And he was like, I'm black. <laughs> he's, like, <laughs> he's like, yes, he can. And what's interesting about Ron, he very seldomly pulls the race card. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's, so we go, so he sees me go work out i run five miles right on the treadmill yeah. in the rv park yeah in the hot i'm pouring sweat and so i come i come out and then we have a crawfish boil i eat inarguably about two pounds of crawfish four pounds of crawfish i mean, i'm just yeah. my pile of crawfish was so fucking big you just I've killed four it, yeah. tall boy ipas <laughs> and i'm done for the day i'm tapped out i'm about to make a tito's and soda and ron comes in like a fucking firefly off a chain link fence. Mm -hmm. Just get your shoes on, fat boy. And he's like, I'll beat you in a foot race. I got every, I mean, it was so out of like. He was talking a lot of shit. It was, it was out of, like, out was of nowhere, great. like almost like someone had built him up. Yeah. And he came in and I started laughing so fucking hard because I'm like, here's the thing. Watching I gotta you guys race, by the way, it was hilarious because you both were in a race running completely upright, almost backwards. You guys are <laughs> yeah. I got to be honest with you. I'm going to be real honest with you. Yeah. He beat me the second he put his money on the counter. What do, what do you mean? He got my head. Oh, like, he did? I, yeah. Like, and I couldn't stop laughing because I couldn't stop laughing at the idea that he was so confident that it's, it's like when, when you, when you tell someone you're going to beat them and you go, you know, it's the interesting thing. It's like when I, when I taunted Joe during sober October yeah. and he flipped a switch. Oh, he totally flipped the switch. And I was like, I was like, wait, what? I, I, we were just playing around. I think he thought, I'm not going to let, what Ron did to me, he goes, I'm not going to let happen. The game's over. You want to fucking compete? We're fucking competing. And he goes, no more humor. Let's fucking hurt each other. And yeah. you're just like, whoa. When Ron put his money on the thing, I was like, I was like, that's his money. That's a thousand dollars a lot. Like, how the fuck? And I was like, I think he might be able to beat me. Like, I think there's something. I <clears throat> I don't know about the this. The doubt crept in your head. Well, here's the deal. He told me this after. He goes, he was always growing up. He was always the fastest kid on every team. Uh -huh. And you don't ever lose speed. Despite how fat you might get, you don't ever lose speed. I've never been fast. Even when I was skinny, I was never the fastest kid on the team. Yeah. So even probably at my lightest, I may have a hard time beating Ron because fast is a different twitch. It's like a... Mm. Yeah, but you, you do <clears throat> lose your... like. If yeah, you, you carry well, more yeah. weight, you're gonna you're gonna run slower. But I think he looked at me and mm -hmm. thought, "Wait for weight." He Are you guys like me. about the same weight? No, I don't know. Pro probably, probably same, same height or no? No, we're not the same height. I don't think. But uh, we're probably the same weight, I guess. But uh, I don't know. I'll call him. I'll he'll. I know he'll answer. <laughs> fucking, fucking Ron. Ron, he beat the second he put his money down. He beat me. Yeah. The second, because I was like. It was in my head. I, I'm talking, you I was, called me, dude. You called me. You go. I lost a run in a foot race, dude. <laughs> I was on the. I was on the fucking. I was on the starting line, going like, <clears throat> "There's no way I'm gonna win this." I remember really? thinking, "Yeah," because I was. I was giggling too much. Like I wasn't competitive. Mm -hmm. I was giggling, going like, "I got to turn this on." And then the first one where he called that I started off off the line. Yeah, that's fucking bullshit. Like, I did not start off the line. He just didn't have a good jump on me, and he called bullshit. Ron's always going to load the race so that he he's going to set up the cars. He'll never going to race you in some shit he he can't win in. Okay. Like, you're never going to be like, uh, like, he's like, let's go one-on-one -on -one basketball. I'm like, what's up, buddy boy? Hey, uh, hey, we're talking about the foot race. I'm doing two bears, one cave with Tom. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> what's up, Ron? What's going on, Tom? How you doing, man? Hey, man, I'm happy now. We're talking about how you smoked big old Bert in that race. <laughs> and he think he, he won a rematch, and he think he's going to win. And oh. I started, I started a weight loss. Oh, uh, really? Yes, sir. Wait, when was that? Was that, was that the cheeseburger with the, the poblano on it with the onion rings? That, 
exactly. That's the only thing I ate yesterday. But didn't that shit look delicious? It looked That's fucking. My brother, I told you that I want I want to uh, take him up against uh, beating Bobby Flay. Okay. He can cook. He can cook. That looked good. That looked good. So wait, Ron, how much do you weigh now? Uh, I think about two forty, two forty-two. Yeah, we're the same weight. We're the exact same weight. Okay. I'm trying to get down to about between 220, maybe 215. Oh, I want to drop about 25 pounds. That's my dream. Uh, that run, that's my dream weight. We can do it together. Fuck yeah, we can. We can. I want yeah. in on that rematch. I want to bet on the no, rematch. No, no, he, no. He, look, I, I, Ron, this is what I said. And tell me if you think you're right. I'm right on this. Okay. I go, the second Ron put his money on the table, he won. The he, you were in yes. my head. You, what's that? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so, so you want to know how he said the rematch? How? He goes, he goes, you want a rematch? And now in my head, I'm like, yeah, I want a rematch. And he goes, and, and this is when he won the second time. He goes, we'll do it in front of your house so I can beat you in front of your kids. Oh, my and God. I went, <laughs> <laughs> who wants to, Tom, who wants to lose in front of their kids? Nobody. No it's, way. It's bad, it's bad enough he lost in front of our team. I mean, our whole team was there. Yeah. He lost in front of them. But We're, then to lose again in front of his wife and kids, it'd be over. Hey, it'd be over. What was your, what was your gamemanship? Because you got to admit, I did not start this. You started it. What was your I don't even remember. I don't even remember how we got started in the bus on it that day. I really don't. God. But it was, it was just the fact that you really thought you were going to beat me. Yeah. Yeah, I did. You yeah. thought you were going to beat me. And see, it's one thing you got to learn about me. When I put money on the line, I know I'm going to win. Wait, Ron, who would who would win between you and Burt one-on-one basketball? Oh, I'd kill him. <laughs> I'd kill him. I'd kill him. I'd murder him. Because, I'd murder him, Tom. Because he was he'd saying... Be better off, he'd probably be better off if we did baseball. I don't know if I got my swing anymore, but I played high school baseball. He, th- he said... He said Ron thinks he could beat me in basketball one on one. Okay, I would reject bet my ridiculous salary, <laughs> two week salary, that I would beat him in basketball, hands down. We can play the ten, we can play the five. Make it easier on yourself. Because <laughs> if, if you don't score every time you get the ball, it's a wrap. How about I'll give you the ball first, and I'll give you the ball first. See, this is how he wins. He, yeah. It's it's I, you. He's already in your fucking head. <laughs> how about now, Bert? Bert thinks he's like a gracious swimmer. Could you beat him in swimming? No. No. You know what? I think I give him a run for his money, and I think he would agree with it after watching me swim in Utah. He goes, Ron called me a racist because I I saw him do the the freestyle. Yeah. And I go, you can legit swim. He goes, yeah, you're a racist. You didn't think. I, he goes, you didn't think I could do a freestyle. I go, no, I just didn't expect it. Okay, I put it to you like this, Tom. After we drop this weight, I think I can beat him in the pool. Ooh. I don't think I can beat him at the weight I'm at right now because he swims almost every day. All I want, I'm like, just trying to say, I want all this shit filmed. I want the swimming contest. <laughs> I want the new foot race. I want the one-on-one basketball. Ron, for the people listening, tell them one time who's the better dancer. Oh, fucking Tom Segura, hands down. (laughs) You know what? I think that's how this shit got started. Fuck it. Tom, uh, first of all, first of all, Ron's delusional. Okay, we run into Jim Jones and Cameron at a Nets game, Knicks game, and Ron goes. Now, man, I'd like to be on tour with them and go to games with them. I go, they're not going to take their bus driver to a fucking basketball game. He goes, the fuck they aren't. I go, the fuck they aren't, Ron. I go, I'm the only one getting you courtside tickets to a fucking uh, mix game. I'm that guy, though. If, <laughs> if I went and drove for Tom, Tom going to want to hang out with it, it, Okay, this, Tom, this is- Ron, Ron, I will tell you right now, Tom would love you as much as I love you, if not more. And you know what, Tom? What's so cool about the friendship that Bert and I have outside of our work relationship? Yeah. That it, it came natural. Yeah. Like, I don't know if he told you. I thought he didn't like me. Yeah. And I thought he was going to fire me after our first weekend. How come? I thought I was done. Why? I had problems. You know, touring, man. I had yeah. problems with the bus. I was trying to get everything, but, <laughs> and I, I don't want, I hate to say this on, on the show. But I impress the boss, and I consider the boss Leanne Christ. She's the one who calls the shot. Yeah. Leanne fell in, Leanne fell in love with me. 
Yep. Yeah. So I I impressed Leanne with what I was doing, but I thought Bert didn't like it, and she told me in the end that he he was that's just the way he was until he warmed up to you. But our our friendship morphed more. Uh, um, just it, it wasn't forced. It wasn't like I was trying to be his friend. Right. I was just being me. So I was just being me. When you when you start, was he standoffish? Was he like just not saying much? Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, short with me. You know, and then like the first weekend, the first night, we had uh, Dad on the bus with us. Yeah. We had Leanne. It was complicated. So that, that first weekend was just kind of rough. Yeah. It was kind of rough. Me and Andrew hit it off real well. Me, Andrew, and hey. Nice. And he hit it off real good the first weekend. The second weekend, he started kind of to warm up. I screwed up again, though, the second weekend. I left him standing at O'Hara Airport for like 15 minutes. Because <laughs> I missed my turn. <laughs> and, and, and I know that kind of pissed him off. And then I was like, okay, this is it. This dude's going to fucking fire me. He's going to think I'm incompetent. Stupid-ass black dude from South Central LA don't know nothing. But I think our, our turning point is I thought he tried to fucking kill me, Tom. He had me run a 5K race in Des Moines, Iowa. You did? And- yeah, that, that's when I that's when I fell in love with Ron is because I go, <laughs> he he finished like in the top fucking 80, and I was like I was and we were running it, and all of a sudden he fell up right behind us, and we said, "How'd you do that?" And he goes, "Oh, I just cut through those woods." <laughs> Dude, I had deer running in front of me and shit, Tom, just scared the shit out of me. I said, what the hell am I doing with these dudes? Three white guys and a black guy in the whole night. Ron's, Ron's got... Trying to set me up. Ron was running... Ron's running a 5K in Jordans with a towel over his shoulder, just spitting game at fat white chicks who aren't running either. <laughs> <laughs> cleaning up, cleaning up, trying to get a pink uh, toe. Uh, oh. <laughs> Oh my God! Hey, you know what? The, the offer still stands, and you know we can bring uh, Tom. What is Tom? My brother owns a growery, and I want to go give her a, a, Weed. a tour of it. Nice. Sometime next week or the week after. Yes. Guys, hey, Tom and I are in on that. We want to go to that run. We sure. set that up. Okay. Did you, you guys let me know what days you're free? I'll yep. give my brother a call so we can take a ride out there. You guys is can take uh, take a yeah. tour. Uh, post on the Instagram, give some shout outs and whatnot. And who's your uh, brother's? Who's your brother's partner? Can you say? I would rather not. Okay. You can tell Tom off off air. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll talk. All right. I'm gonna finish up the episode. I'll talk to you later, brother. How you feel? All you right, feel good? Right, guy. You guys take it easy. Take care, bro. You feel bro. good? Yeah. Oh man, I feel fucking great. Perfect. Perfect. All right, brother. I love you. I'll talk to you later. All right. I love you too, man. Bye. So um. We all got the coronavirus test, so we're all texting each other in the morning going, how you feel? Because it's yeah. still been within the 14 days. Sure. Ron getting a coronavirus test is the funniest thing I've ever What did you do, seen. the swabs? Yeah, we did the swabs in with the, the nose. nose. Yeah. And uh, Ron has a problem with needles, and he has a problem with, uh, Tom, I've never laughed so fucking hard in my life. So they go, all right, we're going to do a nasal swab. And he goes, uh, I ordered... <laughs> I ordered one mouth swab, and they're like, "There's no such thing," <laughs> and he just fucking loses it. They do this thing. I'll show. We we have a video. I'll I'll show you the video, and he gets he gets at one point he tells the nurse like, "Oh fuck, come on, bitch!" Like, and so then it's a, it's just this Japanese nurse, like really small, kind of cute, with a big mask on. So then we this is my favorite ever. So we all have to get blood, and he goes, "I'm gonna t- I give it out of the hand," and they're like, "We we don't do it out of the hand. We do it out of the arm." And he goes, "No, I go out of the hand." And then, so they look for a vein in his hand. They can't find one. They go, can we just do an arm? I'm talking to Ron. Yeah. I'm holding a picture of Martin Luther King up, up for Ron to look at for power because he's freaking out. He's panicking. <laughs> You're holding up a picture of MLK? Yeah, yeah. We have a picture of MLK that we found one time. We did a sketch and we bought, ended up buying the picture. Me and Ron, it was just... Anyway, so he's about to give blood and he looks at me and he goes, I'm not good with this arm shit. I said, really? And he goes, last time. <laughs> Someone took blood out of my arm. I knocked the nurse out. And this Japanese woman with the needles just looks up like, oh, <laughs> and I am crying. He's the fun- funniest fucking guy in the world. Yeah. If you take a bus tour, I would go take Ron with you yeah. and you will laugh. Not- and by the way, it's like, I- it should be known is that like, what's cool about Ron is he does his job. Like he does his job. Like he shows up, he shuts his door, he drives. Yeah. He's not, he's not like trying to like be a part of the, like he'll talk. If you want to talk to him, he'll hang out and stuff, but he's working. He like legit. That's what I love about people that can do their job 100% and 
and then fucking hang. Like, if yeah. we gonna go float the Rio Grande, he's like, no, I'm too tired. I gotta work. I gotta drive tonight. Yeah. But if you're doing something fun, they're like, I'll hang out. I'll have some crawfish, but I gotta get to bed soon. Yeah. Like he he does his job first and foremost. I fucking love. Does he work for one of the bus companies? Like yeah. Well, he works for. I think he's uh, he can do everything. I think he's got some works at senators and all that. Okay. But for this run, we just did. Uh, yeah. It was it was dude. I love the guy. Yeah, that's great, man. Yeah. I love that you guys did that race. So. One of the things also a lot of people have noticed, um, they, they, they call you a hypocrite because they say the audacity of this man to say that when he when you see someone eating ice cream, they're a child, right? You said that like when you know someone's a mess if you see them eating ice cream and then they said, you know, juxtaposed against you drinking a, you know, a gallon plus of Kool-Aid a day. Um, and then you said that you actually broke and bought ice cream. So right, right before I left, I, I mean, I wasn't even thinking about the conversation we had with Nadav and you. <clears throat> right before we left, <clears throat> I was feeling blood pressure. I know, yeah. fucking blood pressure medicine. Yeah, and, but I, dude, I lost my voice the second I. You got sounded on stage. terrible. The d- on first the time phone. I got on stage, I was so excited. I lost my voice that first show, and then ever since then, and I think a lot of it had to do with allergies. It was like my vocal cords were just clogged the entire time. I had a hard time talking this tour. Mm. I would know how I'm going to approach this next one very slowly, meticulously. What do you mean? Build your vocal cords. Oh, okay. Because you go in and you just jam them. And they're like, yo, we haven't been working at all. Right. <clears throat> so the day before I left, I was going to get blood pressure medicine and I'm at Rite Aid. And uh, and I go and they have Ben and Jerry's stacked to the thing. And I went, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to surprise the girls. I'm going to get them Ben and Jerry's. And I'm going to load up the fridge with Ben and Jerry's. And then go, hey, while I'm gone, guys, enjoy some ice cream. You know, it's like every time they have ice cream, they'll think about me. So I get all these Ben and Jerry's. So I come home off the road and I have a little bit, I know I'm going to get shit about this. I have a little bit of a process of detoxing off the road. Like I take a half, like a half a milligram. So I have half a milligram Xanaxes. I take a quarter of a milligram of Xanax okay. the first night that I don't drink just so that I'm like, I know that I won't drink if I take it. And it kind of lets me relax, go to sleep, <clears throat> get a good night's sleep. So I uh, take a half a milligram Half a, a half a quarter or whatever, quarter milligram. And I start feeling really good right away. Really good, right? And so then I'm like, I bet if I took a little nibble of an edible that I could just kind of on top of that. And mm-hmm. no, no alcohol, just right. a little nibble of an edible. Yeah. So I take a little nibble of an edible. And, th- and I don't really... So you have the quarter bar in you. Yeah. And, and then the, you have a little A edible. little nibble. It's, it's called the Joey Diaz cocktail. Yeah, that's, that's what he's like. What you do is you take a thousand milligrams... <laughs> Of THC, yeah. then you have a baby aspirin, or you take a baby Xanax. Just kind of takes the. That's how you do it. It takes the edge off. So I take a little bit, a little Good nibble, plan. and then I get the taste of chocolate in me. Right. Mm-hmm. I go into the living room and the girls are eating uh, ice cream, and I went, "Ooh, I wouldn't mind that." And I said, "What do we got in there?" And they were like, uh, "Stephen Colbert's brand or whatever. I don't even know what it is. It's like uh, waffle cone, mm-hmm. chocolate." So I go, oh, I wouldn't mind a little bit of this. So I start eating fucking ice cream. And I'm high and I'm on a Xanax. And I am, I feel, I got it. I was like, I'm such a fucking hypocrite. This is so enjoyable. It is as enjoyable, if not more enjoyable than a beer or a wine. It is, you're like, every bite, your brain starts going, oh, come on, more. Oh, give me more. I know you had you sick. made this discovery at 47. <laughs> I'm not a, I'm I've always thought ice cream is an irresponsible decision. Uh-huh. I think it just it's like when you've been trying to lose weight your whole adult life you're like who the fuck eats ice cream? And then you eat it and you're like, "Oh, this is the same person yeah. who's an alcoholic. It's just you're doing it a different way. We're you're totally. going to like, oh, I, I've given up. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah. And then especially if you're not drinking and you go, well, I'm definitely not going to have, you know, 800 calories drinking tonight. Right. Why not have 350 and be in hog fucking heaven? Well, how much ice cream did you eat? Last night, I brought out the ice cream before the meal was over. <laughs> did We're, you eat a pint? I brought out the, cho- the, the brownie one that they yeah. have. We have chunky monkey we got fish food we got all these fucking ice creams and i'm like and by the way this is what is me so like when i get lit up for cancel culture yeah, yeah. and they're like he's a hypocrite no fucking shit i'm aware i'm a hypocrite yeah, i yeah. get it yeah i don't like it either okay right, right 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 but i'm also making the point that i think that the 350 calories is a little bit low of a guess because of how i know you consume <laughs> so i don't okay think- okay 
I got through half a pint of Chunky Monkey before I realized there were bananas in it. Okay. And the, my daughters watched me go, I go, there's fucking bananas. And they're like, it's called Chunky Monkey. And I went, yeah. I didn't think that meant bananas. <laughs> so I put it down. I was like, I fucking hate bananas. They're like, you ate half a pint. <laughs> Put it in. And get another one. And then I got the brownie. And then, yeah. dude, the brownie is like, I yeah. mean, the brownie is like, I'm talking. Incredible. The br- I'll tell you how good, I'll tell you how good ice cream. By the way, I got to apologize to everyone, all the shit I talked about ice cream. Yeah. A great ice cream, like great ice cream. Yeah. And I mean, and I got to say, Ben and Jerry's really does it better than anyone else because they have so much good stuff inside it yeah. that it breaks up the ice cream. It feels like a treat. Ben and Jerry's, it's 350 calories for half a pint of the, the chocolate brownie one I was looking at. A quarter at. of a pint. For a quarter of a it's pint. A, a quarter? A quarter of a pint. Yeah. I thought that math didn't work out because it says yeah. like yeah. 1,200 calories for the whole pint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I... Uh, By the way, so breaking news, everybody. Bert likes ice cream. Who would have thought the guy that loves Kool-Aid likes ice cream also? <laughs> the guy that ranks his top four or five chocolate I'm bars. Just, I'm just looking forward to the time we come in here and you go, I did something. <laughs> you're, like, what? you're like, I ate a gallon of ice cream last night. I I, uh, I had a little bit of a Xanax, a little nibble of a Xanax last night because mm-hmm. I was I was feeling anxious because I was because the hardest thing about the this the hardest thing about this tour has been, and I, and I feel bad for those people going out and doing one weekends and then coming home. Yeah. It's like, it was nice for me to be isolated out on the road. Yeah. And if I had symptoms, I knew I had to get in a hotel and stay in a hotel. And that was it. We just locked down, you stay in a hotel, and then you figure it out from there. It would be a financial disaster for the yeah. store, but that was how you're going to solve it. And then we did the whole tour. We got coronavirus tested, coronavirus tested. Everyone, all eight of us came back negative. So you're like, great, we're cool. But you also know I had to quarantine. I had to quarantine for a little period of sure. time. In the bus in LA. Like I stayed in the bus 4th of July. I stayed in the bus 5th of July. I stayed in the bus until I was like, okay, we're good. Like I think we're good for the, like in the window that it would show up, but it's still 14 days. Yeah. 14 days is like as long as it could last. I think I talked to Drew, 80% of it, I'm clear. Like there's a very small chance that I have it, but there is that chance. And man, I'll tell you what. It is a weird feeling, and I hope there are people that understand this, to wake up in the morning and just go, like, check your faculties and go, am I okay? Yeah. Like, am I, like, cause that, you'd wake up and you'd feel sick. Sure. So you wake up and you're like, am I okay? So I was getting anxious last night going like, I don't want to feel, like you start really be obsessing yeah. about everything. So I took a little nibble of a Xanax last night and, before dinner. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And, man, I got into, I got into ice cream before dinner and ended. I was... Tom, they're eating dinner. Leah made such a great dinner. And I just spun around, opened the freezer, and just pulled out Chunky Monkey, started eating it. And the girl's like, what are you doing? And I was like, well, I'm done. And they're like, well, you don't need ice cream. And then I was like, I know, but I'm getting into ice cream. It's like my thing. <laughs> ice cream yeah, is wait. so fucking good. Wait, now, by the way, I wanted to tell you, I was very impressed. I think a lot of people were at the dialogue. Do you think, do you think Ben and Jerry's would do a, not to interrupt? No, you didn't. Go ahead. Do you think Ben and Jerry's would do a two bears, one cave ice cream? Uh, we could probably float the idea. Hey, Ben and Jerry's. Oh, we should probably do it uh, through another <laughs> channel. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Go ahead. You know, yeah. like we could actually have someone call. <laughs> no, like, hey, 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 Ferrari. Are you guys watching? So, um, like a little Kool Aid inside. <laughs> a little Kool Aid inside. I was impressed, as a lot of people were, at the way you and Nadav worked out your, you know, your situation. When I went to take a shit on the last episode, I watched it later. You guys were both very grown up about it, you know? I, I read the comments. Did you read comments that people sent in Dov? Uh, I read some of them. What were the comments? It was, it was, it were good. It oh, that's like, what I'm that saying. how two grown men should talk. Exactly. You guys yeah. were like, you guys really talked it out. And then like, what were you saying? Like, I know you weren't feeling well, that you need to clear your head. Yeah. Um, I mean like just, I don't know. I've just like this coronavirus stuff is like legit been just a, an emotional roller coaster. Hang on, I can't hear you. Yeah. Hold on one second. Say oh, it again. Maybe put your headphones on. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> um, Just this coronavirus stuff has kind of like, it's kind of just taken a toll on me. Like, I feel like in the last two weeks, I've went to the clinics and gotten tested at least two or three times. Like, just everything. And like, I'm always, I'm, I'm being pulled in like so many different directions. I just wanted to talk to you about if like it's pot, like, I don't know. I just feel like I kind of like need a need a couple days off or something. Like we could talk about when and stuff, but sure. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, 
I feel like I just need to like clear. You need a couple of days off. Yeah, I need a I need to clear what's uh, what's in between the ears, you know. Yeah, sure, man. I mean, if, if you can, uh, you know, have the guys here take over what you do. Yeah, I, I mean, like if it's okay with you. I mean, it it, it doesn't it doesn't have to be immediate, but yeah. like maybe uh, I don't know. We we we, we could talk about it. Or yeah, something. I think in the future we could probably do this off air. Oh, for sure. Yeah, okay. I was like, is this a bit? Okay, yeah, no, I was like, I'm like, all right, man. Yeah, take your days off, man. All right, so, sure. Sorry, I didn't mean to do it. All. It's okay. It's okay. I'll tell you this, Nadav. Uh, I don't think enough people are crediting people's sanity and lack thereof to this coronavirus. I think a lot of people go, "Well, I don't have this coronavirus. I'm fine." But I'm watching it online. I mean, we've been texting about it online. It's super stressful. You go through that phase of like, "What is this?" You're shocked, and then. Then you go through like, like I, I said, I went through like, a, I think I bought like 25 pairs of shoes. And I'm like, what am I doing? I think it was like a coping yeah. thing. And then, uh, then you get into the exercise phase then you get into like the eating and booze and like all of it is like uncertainty, you know? Like, yeah. Oh, hundred percent. I know that I, um, I have not been processing anything properly at all. I, yeah. I feel depression for Isla because I feel like she's not going to get to start high school the way everyone should start high school. Yeah. I feel depression for Georgia because I go... Well, her junior year is going to suck. Like, like she's got one more. Like, I feel depression for because we, you know, I, I've talked about this, but we built a house and it's or we bought a house and we can't do what we're going to want to do because of lockdown problems and all these things. And so all of a sudden, life's on hold for everyone. And but you're still getting older and you're still possibly getting ill and you're still possibly passing away. Yeah. And it, and my sanity was not good. I was totally fine on this tour, and then I had an incident where I shit all over a wall. And, and I went into the bus and I said, I, I was joking. I was like laughing cause I shit all over a wall and all over a toilet and I had to clean it up. And it was really like, it was like, I Tom, I haven't done this since like sixth grade. And I got, I mean, there was a moment where I looked in the mirror and I was like, oh, we got a problem, buddy. Like I'm like, I looked at myself naked and I just got, where a, did you shit in the wall? a long story. Okay. Okay. I can't really tell you all the details. Okay. So, and by the way, and, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, if I was uh, short with you, I, I definitely take your days off, whatever you need. Okay. Uh, okay. How else should I say it? Definitely take your days off. Yeah. Take some days off. Oh. Do you want to do a, a vacation with us? Um, sure. Wait, no, do no, no, you, no, 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 <laughs> no. Take vacation with us? What are you talking about? I don't know. Oh. That sounds fun. No. <laughs> yeah, it's been tough because I walked into the bus after I shit on the walls and I was like, and I was I was still lighthearted. I was in a good mood. And yeah. I was like, thank God diarrhea isn't a symptom of coronavirus. And everyone looked at me like, uh, it is. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> did you wipe with your hand for that one? No, I did. I remember hearing, I want to say Rogan said one time that is that someone shit or his wife threw up. He doesn't have a problem with it. He was like, ah, it's just cleaning up peanut butter or whatever. And I was yeah. like, huh? He was like, it's just, I don't have a problem with throw up. I don't mind it. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me. I just clean it up. I was like, I'm not that guy. I was crying in a mirror going, we, we're back here. I'm 47 and I was, this, we're, this is the same as sixth grade. Why haven't we learned anything? It's probably the ice cream. Yeah. All right. We got to run. Um, it was a lot of fun. Thanks for joining us. Love you. Are we done? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, let me yeah. take my headsets off. You want to say bye? Uh, that was a, I, the, there's so much more we could talk about. I can't wait to do our next episode. I know. It's going to be fun. Yeah. We'll do it next time. I missed you. I really did miss you. Yeah, you did? I yeah. missed you too, man. We got to do this on the road where we do live ones and then, I don't know, maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe, maybe. Big show? Yeah, big yeah. shows. I like it. it. Let's talk about it. All right. I love All right. you. Love you too. Bye-bye. Bert and Tom. Tom and Bert. One goes topless while the other wears a shirt. Tom tells stories and Bert's the machine. There's not a chance in hell that they'll keep it clean. Here's what we call Two Bears, One Cave. No scripts, a bit of booze, amateur fartology. Dirty jokes, raunchy humor, no apologies. Here's what we call Two Bears, One Cave.